So I wanted to ask you because you know a lot of people they say that when a when a referee is doing a good job, you know it's like you don't even notice he's there, and when a referee is doing a bad job, you know he sticks out like a sore thumb. So what are the, some of the little things about refereeing that people might not ever notice, uh, but that are really important? Well, the art of refereeing comes down to judgment and movement, being in the right place at the right time in the ring. Uh, You have to move with the fighters and be in a position, if necessary, to go in uh, for a stoppage. As you see, uh, one fighter, I call the loss of presence, starting to receive more than he or she is giving. So you have to circle in and you want to stay out of the way and just move and flow with them. Some uh, refs call it the open door or open window. You want to position yourself between the fighters in such a manner as you're in a position to call low blows. Um, When you have an orthodox fighter and a southpaw, you really have to be between them to make sure that a, you know, a knockdown is truly a knockdown and because they have the propensity to step on each other's feet right. with their various stances. So it's just getting into the rhythm of the fight. Um, with the little guys, you really got to move and um, you can't be stationary. Even with the, 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 the heavier weights, you may have a, a little more time to get in position, but it's all positioning And it's funny, as you begin your career, you want to be noticed for the right reasons. Being on time, being effective, being in condition. And as your career lengthens, and I've been blessed to have a a nice career, and um, you you want to get in and get out, and the biggest compliment I can receive now is, did you do that fight? Right. That means that you were inconspicuous in every aspect. But basically, it's judgment and movement. You've got to you've got to flow with the fighters. You've got to work your way in. Uh, if you see a fighter in some difficulty, uh, you've got to be close enough to implement a break. I'll verbalize, but you have to be in a position. If they don't listen to you, close enough to get in and physically break them. You cannot yell break across the ring because one fighter will step back and the other one will cold cock them. And it's your fault because you are out of position. So you have to go in, I'll verbalize as I did Saturday, break, some step back, but not far enough. You still have to get in. So there's an equal amount of separation at the break. No matter what you tell them, they're in the fight mode and they really may not listen. And you have to be always in position to enforce. If you verbalize, I tell them, I will try to talk you out of a clinch. Let them go, work inside. If that doesn't work, I'm coming in and take a full step back. And if you hear me verbalize, don't look at me. Pay attention to me, but concentrate on your business. So that's uh, that's the best advice I can give is to, you've got to be, listen, In my view, fighters are the best conditioned athletes in the world. Uh, Daniel, hold your hand up for three minutes and move around. That alone gets you tired. Right. Forget about the fact that you have someone across the ring that wants to take your head off, literally. So I tell at the seminars, if the fighters train, you train. You've got to go third. If you're lucky enough to get a title fight, you got to go 36 solid minutes. 10-round fight, 30 minutes. So your workout has to be no less than 36. Try to get an hour in every day to be ready to go. So, um, again, to, to, to sum it up, it would be judgment and movement in the place at the right time. That, that's, that's simply the best way I can describe it. And conditioning plays a major role in that. You can't huff and puff. you got to be ready to go. 